Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Gabriel Knight 3. Last time, Grace uh, gave us a bit of information on uh, the Holy Grail. Turns out, the Holy Grail does not mean what many people think it means. It does hold the blood of Christ in a sense, but in a sense that it uh, is talking about his descendants. So his actual DNA is what it was talking about. Interesting, we have two people that are uh, fighting to uh, have control of that blood, the Priory, as well as the Stonemasons. It's interesting stuff. Anyway, uh, in the last episode we saw Estelle on her way out for some reason, uh, so let's see if we can go find her. So we want to go... I believe uh, she's out there somewhere. You can see the her vehicle's gone. Her and that Lady Howard's vehicle. I can even kind of see like who's out and about depending on whose vehicle is there and whose isn't. So there's a vehicle there. Let's find a, a good spot to uh, follow it. We have a police car here, but uh, don't care much for that. So let's uh, not worry about them. Let them do their job. We do you want to wait for... Uh, Stell? Actually, I don't even know if uh, I actually have her passing through here. Oh, no, there we go. So wait till my cursor changes. There we go. So what is she up to? Estelle stopped in the middle of nowhere, as far as I can tell. Hmm. So yeah, if you follow her like this then you get uh, two points, but if you followed her right when she left the hotel, you actually missed these two points, which is kind of weird. So yeah. Extra points. And uh, so there's her vehicle. Where did she go? Is the question. Possibly up in this direction. Yeah, this is a place we haven't been to before. It's that little secluded spot. I wonder what she's doing without Lady Howard. Hello? Looks like we got us another treasure hunter. No doubt. Hi, Estelle. Everything okay? Did you follow me here, Mr. Knight? Me? Uh-huh. I just stopped to see if you needed help. I do not need help, but thank you for your concern. Don't mention it. So, uh, how come Lady Howard's not with you? Kind of joined at the hip, ain't you? She's had a very difficult morning. I would have stayed with her, but um, time is of the essence. Yeah, they did uh, have uh, some theories about the treasure, and so I guess Estelle's continuing the search with that Lady Howard for now. How did you meet Lady Howard, anyway? Her family was the largest landholders in my village. I knew her growing up, of course, but we never played together. She made quite a name for herself on the stage, you know, when she was younger. Huh. And I was working in London myself as a nurse. I went to see her perform. Well, we became, um, friends. When my father died and left me the cottage, we moved back to Hampstead. It's not exactly the manor she was born to, but it was sold years ago. Ironically, it's on the market again. Hmm. All right. Does Lady Howard still perform? Well, she's taking a break from her career. Good to know. 
So, what's out here? You can see for yourself. Doesn't look like anything to me. But then you wouldn't be here if that was the case now, would you? Some people don't care to tell other people their business. Oh, that's kind of rude, isn't it? It was a perfectly friendly question. Oh, I I'm sorry. It's just that Lily really prefers we keep our business to ourselves. Some people can be ruthless, you know, particularly... Men? Well, now that you've said so yourself. <laughs> can anyway pinpoint her accent? I know it's, like, british -y, but, like... If you can, like, kind of pinpoint it, that'd be interesting, because I haven't really quite heard it. Maybe it's just sort of the nasally quality of her voice that changes it. I don't know. So this is the spot you and Lady Howard are betting your treasure hunting dollars on, huh? Really? I wish you wouldn't ask such things. <laughs> hey, just curious. I don't believe in the treasure myself. All that stuff about ciphers and nonsense. Sonier didn't conjure that money. Well, I'm not saying he didn't find something, but what if he took all there was? I don't believe it. There's got to be something here, and we... And we've got to find it? <laughs> Why is that, Miss Styles? It's none of your business. I'm sorry, but, but that's all I'm going to say about it. Okay. And she's done. Hmm, so I wonder why she's out here. This spot in particular. Well, she's not going to tell us. Okay, so, um, let's see. We also want to uh, check out Monsieur Montreux. A little bit more. Let's see, where uh, is that place anyway? Is that it? Chateau de Blanche? Reseras. I think this was it. Yeah, this was it. Okay. And Grace could have avoided Montreux, but perhaps we can talk to him in person as uh, Gabriel. Je regrette, mais nous sommes fermés. Oh, uh, I have no idea what you just said, but I... Yes, yes, what is it you want? What is it I want? Oh, good question. Let's see. I deserve that. Yeah, he's not going to let us in. I, I think he said something about, uh... His, uh, mash being sick? I'm not completely sure, though. Anyway, yeah, we can't do anything here yet. We need to find a way to get in, and we can't do it as Gabriel Knight. Well, not as Gabriel Knight, the investigator, at least. So there's something we can do on Sydney. That might uh, be of help to us. Go on in. Go upstairs. Yes, I'm going to narrate everything for you because, like, what else is there to say right now? And let's go into the room. It's weird how sometimes it just automatically does it, and sometimes Gabriel has to, like, walk there painstakingly slowly. Oh well. Anyway, Sydney has a little special feature here you might have noticed. Make ID. So, uh, let's see. We could go uh, as a doctor, but I doubt they'll just trust any random doctor to come in, even if he is sick. So let's uh, try something else. There's medical, reporter, repair, sales, police. He does own that restaurant and winery. Perhaps he would like a reporter. And I believe you want to do it as New York Times. Alright, that should do it. 
Hey, that should work. Yeah, definitely don't use a sales ID. That would be annoying. They uh, probably don't want random salespeople coming in. So let me check if it's in the inventory. There it is. So, that is uh, all you need. Now let's uh, go back. I'll just meet you there. Alright, here we are. So uh, let's try this again. Yes? My name's Knight. I'm a reporter. I'm doing a feature on longer dark wineries, and I'd love to include you in my spread. I'll see if the chateau owner is free. That was quick. Bonjour, Monsieur Knight. I'm Excelsior Montreux, the owner and viticulturist of Chateau de Serre. Nice of you to see me, Mr. Montreux. I should have made an appointment, but I get better results just knocking about. The best places don't advertise. Ah, well, how true. Now allow me to take you to the wine tasting room. Muscle? What would you like to sell, sir? Are you a red man or a white? No, no, no. Let me guess. Red, yes? Gosh, it shows, huh? Do you like it dry? Oh, <laughs> hell. I'd drink dust if I could. <laughs> well, let's see then. Perhaps the uh, 76 Merlot? Yes, sir. I know absolutely nothing about wine and the difference in how dry or wet it is. So I. <laughs> Probably respond the same way Gabriel does, just kind of vaguely. I'm terribly sorry that you caught us unprepared today. We were about to shut the main gate. Everything's all right, I hope. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here, anyway. The constable called a little while ago. There was a murder in the vicinity last night. A murder? It's very unusual, I assure you. But I suppose even here we're not immune. Oh, well, we should let it breathe for a moment. <laughs> right. Nothing worse than suffocated wine. <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. Let's uh, start off with something relevant so that he doesn't get the impression that we're not who we are. What exactly is viticulture? You are a wine critic, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's your definition? Well, to me, viticulture is about breeding, and I don't mean the mechanics of grafting. Grafting is only a tool. What's meaningful is the essence of the two vines you're combining. There are literally thousands of grapes. And most viticulturists choose from well-known stock. But my father always bred his own grapes and has passed down some very rare species. I'm fascinated. Really? Well, I, I don't want to bore you. It is kind of interesting. Um, there's even a whole college major on this. Of course, uh, the only place that I know they can major in uh, vintnering, at least in the United States, is up in Fresno State near where I used to live. I'd like to hear more about your breeding program. You won't reveal my secrets? For my ears only. <laughs> Very well. The secret is in mixing the best strains, of course. But there is an art to it. My father taught me to visualize the ideal grape. Once you can visualize this perfect fruit, you can analyze even the best stock and see where it is lacking. In color or body, for example. Or perhaps it could be just a touch sweeter or lighter. And the trick is to find a grape equally fine, but one which is perfect in exactly those areas which the first grape is flawed. The marriage of these two vines will produce an air, and then this air undergoes the same process, you see. Oh, don't you ever get where you're going? 
eventually. But even in the interim, your grave will soon be far superior to anyone else's. Try the wine, Mr. Knight. I have a feeling he's not just talking about grapes and wine when he's talking about breeding. <laughs> wow, that's good. This fruit did not come about by accident. It is the result of thousands, even millions of cross-breedings. Everything that it is today is a result of that hereditary tree. Don't you think it is ironic that a grape or even a dog or a cat should be so carefully bred, but that most humans depend on such a silly thing as love. Then again, <laughs> there is something to be said for spontaneity. <laughs> is there? Are you already getting drunk, Gabriel? Anything else? You know, hearing you talk, it reminds me of something. What is it? Alchemy? The transmutation of the Philosopher's Stone? Nope, that's not it. It was Ask Mr. Science. Y'all get that program here? Television? <sighs> I'm afraid not. Well, they had this bit about DNA. Kind of how DNA has this funny pasta shape. But it's really billions and billions of instructions, kind of. You get into DNA with your breeding program at all? Actually, DNA is an interesting issue, Mr. Knight. Did you know that the magic alchemists use was based on an intuitive understanding of the principles of DNA? I'll be darned. But to answer your question, no. I have my own ways of testing the vines. And they're far older and more traditional than DNA testing. Okay. Now, how about yourself? Are you from this area, Mr. Montreux? Yes and no. I grew up in Paris. But my family has owned this estate for decades. My wife and I permanently settled here some years ago. Children do take pleasure in the country air. Oh, you got kids? Oh yes, a beautiful daughter who is away at school. And my firstborn son, Enoch. He's twelve. Have you children? Ah, uh, no. But you must. Oh, children are every man's right to immortality. Well... It's not the kid part I mind so much as the marriage part. Oh, no, no. A wife need not be a burden if she knows her place. Her role is to serve you, after all. To care for home and heirs and leave a man to pursue nobler things. Boy, do we live in different worlds. Uh, okay. <laughs> what kind of training do you need to be a... a a viticulturist. The lessons I consider most valuable came from my father. He was quite a master. Okay. Now let's kind of slip into some other topics. I ran into an interesting tourist angle today. Seems the Holy Grail is supposed to be around here. Oh, the Grail is a marvelous legend. But most stories are ignorant of the true meaning of the Grail. You see, the Grail has far less to do with Christ than with an idea. The fountain of youth, the eternal flame, the philosopher's stone. All of those are related to the Grail? Oh, yes. The Grail is that thing, that one thing, or whatever symbol you use for it, that represents completion, perfection, the absolute. Do you understand now? Well, no, not really. Turning base lead into pure gold, that is the alchemist's aim. But it's not about real lead and real gold. It's symbolic. Man is the lead. God is the gold. Man to God, that is the alchemist's goal. That is the Holy Grail. Huh. But I thought with the Grail, it was actually the blood. The blood in the Grail that was the, uh, um, you know, the immortal thing. Well, of course. The blood is the elixir of life. The juice of the forbidden fruit. The juice of the forbidden fruit? <laughs> no, never mind. Dusty old theories are a hobby of mine. Let's stick to the wine, shall we? Interesting. It might be the idea that because 
Christ, of course, uh, had his paternal lineage straight from God, that his blood then carries the key to immortality. Hmm. -hmm. Do you know anything about the murder? No, not really. There were two men, neither of them from here by the sound of it. Okay, and the last thing. Do you believe the stories about a local treasure? Indeed. It is in my soil, monsieur. Excuse me. Hello, easy Excelsior. Mm -hmm. Ah, oui, 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 oui. Prepare not pour sa leçon. Forgive me, I'm afraid I must return to the house. The news of the murder has quite upset my wife. Besides, my son awaits his afternoon lesson. Well, thanks for the interview, Mr. Montreux. You're most welcome. Au revoir, Mr. Knight. I actually don't think I got all the points for that. Uh-oh. Kind of a nice fella. Um, uh, let me... Restore. Okay, I'm an idiot. I did get all the points. For some reason, I thought I accidentally skipped a... Uh, piece of conversation by not getting to it soon enough. Oh well. And did I say that it was the uh, Priory and the Stonecutters? I meant the Freemasons. I keep thinking Stonemason, Freemason, Stonecutters. They're all different things. Okay. Let's uh, go back to the hotel. So yeah, that's uh, about all we can do. I believe. Let's see, 481 points. That is exactly how many we need at this time. So, back upstairs. So where's Mosley? Hey guys. It's five. Thank you, O oh guardian of the clock. Okay, don't start, you two. I want to hear what happened. You mean at Chateau de Serras? You're right. The guy's probably into one of these secret societies. You should have heard him go on about alchemy, but I don't know. He seemed more bookish than anything. Mm. I say anyone who's involved with these secret societies is a big suspect. Speaking of which, Larry Chester is definitely lying. He said McDougal and Mallory just stopped by last night for directions. I couldn't get him to crack. Who's this? Chester? That's right. Interesting. I'll get started on the treasure angle. Check out the museum and church tonight. That book really got my juices flowing. So that's what it takes. Huh? So, <laughs> are you gonna eat or what? I'm starved. Well, uh, <clears throat> actually, Grace and I had talked about catching up. That's okay, Mose. I want to stick with my research for a while. Why don't you and Gabriel go? I can wait till later if you... No, I think that's a great idea. In fact, I think we should be going right now, shouldn't we, Mose? See ya. <laughs> um, see, Grace? Uh, Poor Mosley. Maybe after dinner. Oh, what is going on there? That is the creepiest thing. What is happening? Second Chronicles 3, Chapter 3, as Solomon begins to build the temple, he makes the veil and the pillars, he uses much gold and many precious stones, and Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. Second Chronicles 3, Chapter 3. When did, would it be Chapter 3, Verse 3? I don't know. But seriously, that is, what is going on there? So now we are once again playing as Grace. What more research can we do? We'll just have to find out next time on Let's Play Gabriel Knight 3. Thank you for watching and have a good day.